Uh, my name is Lauren Pang. I have a, I'm a physician. I also have a master's in public health. I am the medical <coughs> officer for Maui County under the Department of Health. But on this topic, I will speak as a private citizen. I've also been a consultant to the World Health Organization since 1985, retired from the um, Walter Reed Institute of Research. Okay. Now, the position on GMOs, we've actually taken this position a long time, about 12, 15 years, never wavered. We consider them like a product, a drug or vaccine, which has to be proven safe and labeled until released on the market. So for us, like a drug or a vaccine, just because you label it doesn't give you the right to release it. You've got to prove it's safe and exactly who gets it and who doesn't. It's targeted, there's risk and benefit, and grandma might get it, but Uncle Joe might not. So that's what we want. We want these things tested before being released, okay? Now, there's some bills coming out. It's under the EIS, Environmental Impact Statement. And part of that is when you bring these new products to our environment, what happens to the environment, invasive species, but there's also the clause public health, the health. So I'm gonna address the health issues. Like I said, I want these things tested adequately. We said this in 2001 or 2002. Since then, I think in 2008 or 2009, a very big institution, American Academy of Environmental Medicine, they took an even stronger position based on animal data. There's not a lot of human data. Based on what we saw on animals, they're asking quite some extreme things. Number one, that all doctors warn their patients that these products are unknown, number one. Number two, if doctors see something unusual, quantity or quality, they are considered, they are to consider GMOs, because it's so widespread, might be a possible cause. Number three, they want a moratorium on all new GM products till the, we can get how to test these things safely. And number three, the ones that are already out there, they want label. That's American Academy of Environmental Medicine. You can look them up online. Who are these people? This is about 300. Uh, long history, very good calls on lead and other environmental things. Uh, 300 physicians and PhDs. Last year, the AMA, American Medical Association, this huge kind of conservative body, they took a, kind of a mixed position. They did not think it warranted labeling, but they want GMOs, new and old, to be tested for all the side effects that it can cause, not the intended one. For example, if I put in a gene to make your hair yellow. I could test whether or not it makes your hair yellow, how often, how much yellow, very yellow, not yellow, how long. But there are other side effects besides intended ones to make your hair yellow. It might give you nosebleed. They accept that these things you put in go beyond what they intend, and they want the testing of all side effects on these products. That is very difficult to do. Why is that? My job was to test drugs and have vaccines for the intended and unintended effects. Unintended effects are side effects. Uh, we knew before we tested an animal or humans or test tube what the product was. It was consistent. There's an acronym, it's called GMP, Good Manufacturing Product, Good Manufacturing Process. When you do things to GMP, it's consistent. So when I test it, I can say, Matt, this is gonna make the dog vomit. And when I get the next one off the shelf, Matt does the same thing. It's going to make the dog vomit, so it made the dog vomit. If you look at the Institute of Medicine report on GMOs, not only do they have a lot more unintended health effects, but the variation in the product is huge. How can we test anything if you cannot make it consistently? So already you're buying into a very complex system, and a lot of people said, oh, it's so hard to do, why don't we just not do it? Wrong. It's so hard to do, but it should be done. So why don't you not release it till you test it? Not being able to do it technically because it's so complicated, because the product's all over the board, it's not the excuse that, well, I guess we're not gonna test it and just bring it out. That's crazy, okay? So that's my position. And I think we have the published data and the common sense support now of the medical community, now, after maybe 10 years, to do it this way. The industry, they will take the fallback position as, 
Well, these are fringe arguments. The general scientific community supports what we do. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true at all. Besides, when do we use the general scientific community? If you did, who, who are some guys who, are, who bucked the general scientific community and got the Nobel Prize for it? The guys who did H. pylori. Okay, they got the Nobel Prize, they bucked the general scientific community, and they were proven right. I don't care what the general opinion is, show me the data, number one. Number two, what else does the industry say? Well, let's see now, we know it's safe because we ate you know, hundreds of thousands of meals. Do you see anything unusual? After hundreds of thousands of meals, well, do you see anything unusual? Oh yeah, public health wise, we've seen a lot of unusual things. New kinds of cancer, severe allergy in females, prematurity is going up. I'm not saying it's related, but we are seeing things unusual. Next, 100,000 meals. Oh, I didn't see anything unusual. Yeah, that's your opinion. How many cigarettes did we smoke before we said it does cause cancer? I'll give you a hint. We saw it caused cancer in mid 50s. Before the mid 50s, all the suffragettes, 1930s, all that stuff. How many cigarettes were smoked before we said, yeah, it does cause cancer? Okay, so once we saw cigarettes cause cancer, we're tuned up and we are aware of public health issues. Really? How many more years did it take before we saw secondhand smoking causes cancer? 20 years, okay? You're not attuned to anything. Unless things are labeled, unless you specifically look for a product, you cannot anecdotally say, well, gee, nothing was brought to my attention, I guess it's safe. That's kind of um, absurd and that's not the way we go and that's not the way we should go. But. If you want to make that statement, that retrospectively things were safe, I don't believe it, but let's say it was. Let's say it was. Retrospectively, we guessed right and it was safe. Turn the clock back 10 years when you first brought, brought the product out. Do you admit that it was unknown at that time? Absolutely. You only knew it was safe after hundreds of millions of year, uh, meals. How do you release an unknown product? What do you think? First of all, it's labeled. Second of all, a lot is doctor's prescription only. Third is informed consent. If you're going to release an unknown product for whatever reason, I think you need people's informed consent that you are about to do this, especially when it's a life form that can spread. If the drugs and vaccines I worked on have this kind of like, whatever, release it, oh, but make sure you label it, we'd be facing disaster. Furthermore, I'm boarded, you know, in preventive medicine, environmental medicine. What about that asbestos that we kind of released without fully knowing what would cause? What about lead? What about thalidomide? What about DDT and long? We release a lot of stuff without knowing what's going on, and I st we're still cleaning up the mess. Here's something you kind of release without going, knowing what's going on. This is a life form. DDT and those chlorinated hydrocarbons, when we had too much and we figured, hey, I think they do cause cancer, we could say, can we not? anymore, although they're still long-lasting. This is a life form. The regulators, their funding has been cut. We depend on industry money or industry doing in their own projects. When there's that kind of conflict of interest and the regulators have been, they got guys who used to work for industry now for the regulators. The regulators are asleep at the wheel, not just medical, but MMA, Mines and Mineral Administration, Look in the Wall Street Journal about they were supposed to see if the, the shutoff for the deep wells could work. They didn't, but they allowed it. Financial regulators, what are the regulators? EPA? If the regulators are asleep at the wheel, your fallback position is the next step, state. By de facto, these people are the regulators, and they are not to rubber stamp. Well, the Fed said it, okay. You're the de facto regulator. Show me the data. Don't just tell me the Fed said it, okay. I know what the Fed say. In fact, you're trying to get the Feds to preempt us. The state legislators, you, 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 too much for you? We depend on an educated public. An educated public, you know, screening the internet, what else should they be looking at? They should have access to all closed doors meetings. You need sunshine and transparency, so when we know deals are cut. If we're depending on an educated public, they need sunshine and transparency. And I believe we had it until the state legislators exempted themselves from it, but the county legislators did not. Don't you think it's strange that these GM issues, anti-GMO issues, they're kind of supported very well in the county where there's sunshine on it. But when it comes to state, they're not even heard. I mean, I'm not surprised. Oh, by the way, when this issue came about, conflict of interest and all that stuff, all the federal regu regulatory agencies began to look at themselves 
how do we police ourselves? So the NIH, Federal Re Re Regulatory Agency, National Institute of Health, they actually said, I think we should define conflict of interest first. And <clears throat> they listed um, bribery, maybe not in this order, nepotism, and it says political activity. Political activity is listed, I can show you the reference, along with nepotism and bribery. I'm not saying all politicians are corrupt, but I guess we're to assume they are to prove it otherwise. I don't know, why is it listed with bribery and nepotism? That's not my words. That's a quote from the NIH, federal people. If you're going to quote federal regulators to me, the FDA said it's okay, I'm going to quote another federal regulator to you, the NIH, not a regulator, but federal agency. So you can't quote sometimes and sometimes not. So until the feds get on board, the regulators, I think we're kind of on our own, guys. And I was hoping that maybe the state or the county, the county seems to be pretty good, um, would listen at least, because nobody's going to help us.